This meeting is being recorded. Welcome to About an Education podcast. Today, I'm delighted to be speaking to Joe and Tom Brassington. I've had this privilege before and always find conversations with them uplifting and inspiring. I hope you all feel this way too. Joe and Tom are both primary school teachers with an interest and commitment to supporting children to build empathy and to develop emotional honesty. Their interest and passion led them to developing a book to support their own teaching and to use with their classes. This then took on a life of its own and began a journey to become a published book through Unbound, a crowdfunding publisher. A book I think all teachers should have. So let's find out more about Tom and Joe and Bottled Book. So welcome, first of all. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for those kind words. No, it's a pleasure. I'm excited to find out more. And now that we're so close to having the real actual book, we've seen lots of snippets of it. So where did the idea initially come from? So the idea for the book um, came about because me and Joe had been discussing in our separate classrooms, in separate schools, early on in our career, um, similar issues with children that we had in our classes, um, children who found it difficult to regulate their emotions, children who found it difficult to name their emotions, and actually children who found it difficult to talk about emotions generally. And I think for me and Joe, we noticed this pattern um, month on month in the classrooms we were working in. And I guess um, the germ of the idea came from that discussion of how can we help these children to um, develop positive um, relationships with their own emotions and to talk with people they trust about them and um, we spent some time putting some ideas together on um, on our iPhones and sharing ideas with one another and um, we found that over time um, the work we were doing in our classrooms, I think it's fair to say, Joe, the work we were doing in our classrooms was starting to see some fruit and that some of the children who maybe found things difficult before in terms of how they expressed their emotions or even just being able to name them um, were beginning to build up that vocabulary and build up their understanding in that particular area. Um, Joe, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about how that then became a little bit more personal for us, perhaps? Yeah, so Tom's right. We were having these conversations all the time. And what we started to do then was think about ways that we could build empathy in our classrooms. And for us, the, the obvious choice was to think about the books that we're using and how we can use the storybooks and the characters that we're exploring to start to build empathy in our classrooms. Because books are at, at the heart of every primary school classroom. Okay. Stories are at the heart of every primary school classroom. And they already exist in our spaces. So Tom and I were kind of playing with different ways to use them to build empathy and to open these conversations about emotions. And there are so many fantastic children's books that allow you to do that, um, particularly children's books that allow you to explore the emotional experiences of one individual character. Maybe it's a, a character that's angry or a character that's worried or, or sad or experiencing loss. Um, but Tom and I reached a point where we were seeing the kind of fruit of this work, but we felt like there was maybe a, a, a book missing in our, in our kind of emotional libraries in our classrooms. And that was a book that kind of overarched all of this work and just introduced children to the idea that we all have emotions. We all keep those emotions inside us, but that can sometimes be really damaging. And there's a power in learning how to talk honestly about our emotions. And around the same time that Tom and I were doing this work, we, we experienced mental ill health within our own family, which is something that we, neither of us had ever really come across before. And I think what we realized at the time is that we were so unprepared for mental ill health and we were so unprepared to have emotionally honest conversations and this happened at the same time that we were trying to think about how we prepare young people to do that. Um, and I think that was kind of the big motivation for, for Tom and I that made us realize we, we need to do something for our classrooms and, and for our school communities, which is really where, where Bottled started. And 
you started with identifying kind of if you like you identified an issue or a challenge within your own classrooms and actually how do you feel that that issue this was sort of pre-covid how how has that issue manifested now we're kind of back in classroom do you think there's a greater need or are you seeing a greater need i think what i've seen is that children have such an admirable ability to cope and during the pandemic i saw adults who i'm friends with adults in my family adults around me who lives were collapsing around them because so much had changed and so much loss and um, difficult emotions to navigate had presented themselves at one time and children seemed to just get on with what was happening and take one day at a time and um, treat each new challenge as an opportunity to learn which is the reason that I'm a teacher because it's such an encouraging and beautiful place to be in with these children as they navigate life. I think the past couple of years difficult. Um, it's not every child and of course children's experiences of the pandemic have been so wide-ranging that you will have some children who have had such a comforting and um, loving and supportive environment to work in but there are some there are some children for whom there hasn't been an emotionally honest space for them to talk in their life and that gap that um, void that they've got in their life is something that that needs filling and I think um, what I seem to what seems to be presenting itself to me um, across the classrooms and across the um, school that I'm working in and with children that I'm working with is a real need for um, children to be able to just talk through what they've been through and um, and not necessarily with an explicit eye of of trying to find some kind of trauma or trying to find a problem but just being able to identify what has happened and how that's impacted not just them but also their friends and family if parents and adults lives have been completely changed and some of them have found that difficult to cope with those parents and adults are the anchors to which children cling to normally and so what we're what we're seeing is that without that anchor some children might be feeling a little bit emotionally lost and um and I, I think hopefully what we try to do each day and what bottled hopes to do is to take those children who are lost at sea and and to bring them back home and to give them an opportunity to to kind of be reunited and um at one with with how they feel and so bottled started really didn't it as the both of you sitting down together and thinking let's create a resource for our own classrooms as we said, it's grown into something much bigger than this. And from this, what do you hope that the book brings to firstly teachers, but also children? I think that the, the beauty of kind of how this project has grown and unfolded is that Tom and I got to almost trial it first in our classrooms and in our school community. And we saw the power that these conversations had. The book that we've written, we kind of, as we were trying to get in our classrooms, that impacted um, the changes that we made to the book. And it's been written to kind of facilitate these six, we think, really important conversations about emotional honesty. And I suppose my hope is that we will see in other classrooms up and down the country where people have, have chosen to invest in Bottled and to, to invest in these conversations, hopefully we'll see similar results to what Tom and I saw in the classroom when we started it. And that is children starting to become more emotionally honest and to discuss the way that they're feeling and to learn to navigate those feelings together. But I think, I think it's bigger than the individual child because it's about classroom community. And when Tom and I started to use Bottled in our classrooms, it was about setting up a classroom community that is an emotionally honest space, making our classroom an emotionally honest space for all the children in it. And what I hope is that as teachers and schools read Bottled, um, ha have these conversations that it's designed to facilitate, that will be the starting point of a much longer journey in trying to make their classrooms and their schools emotionally honest and, and safe spaces for all of the children and young people in them. 
Yeah. And so then how would you, having trialed it and it, it's it's your baby, um, you, you've got ways that you would love to use it. How would you recommend that teachers implemented you so they get this fab fantastic book and it looks amazing if you haven't seen it absolutely look at um you can see images on instagram and twitter at bottled book am i right in there that's the right handle isn't it go and have a look because it's amazing and uh joe uh is the illustrator of, of all of these wonderful images so it looks amazing how though should a teacher now sat with this wonderful book in their hands use it Sure. I think we see Bottled as a beginning. We, we've, we've kind of said this to one another a few times, that Bottled is not going to solve every child's problems. Bottled is not going to deal with every emotional difficulty that a child will face. But what I hope it will do is it will begin um, a journey of emotional understanding for each child that reads it, that children bec um, begin to be able to identify the emotions that they're feeling, that they They begin to be able to discern how that might um, kind of manifest itself in their lives. And then as they begin to look outwards, as Joe said, um, looking at how we can then form part of a compassionate and empathetic community, how can we begin to understand the differences in one another's emotions and then begin to support others as well? And that's a long journey. It's a journey that I'm definitely not at the end of. And I think it's certainly something that most adults maybe haven't um seen to complete fruition um, we've created a number of teaching resources um, to support teachers in the classroom um, that focus on six key conversations as joe said six being a bit of a magic number in schools because you could have um, six weeks of learning you could do something over each half term there's lots of ways you can kind of, or you could maybe do it over the six years that they're at primary school there's lots of different ways in which you can kind of um, communicate that to um, a number of different people and i think that's really important and okay. go for, yeah carry on um, I, I was just going to kind of run through what those six key conversations are briefly, um, because yeah. the way that we've designed them, and we kind of had our teacher heads on when we were, when we were designing the book and the conversations that go with them, and we design them in in a way that where there's progression, in the same way that um, Tom's a, a geography lead, and um, in key stage one, we would encourage children to look at their local geography first, and then the geography of, of their school, geography of their local area of the UK and eventually beyond that and in the same way um, we're encouraging children to look at their own emotions and then build from themselves so the first conversation is around naming emotions the second conversation is describing emotions the third conversation is around how we all have emotions and that sometimes we bottle those and sometimes there's a valid reason to bottle them and, and I want I, I think that's important to discuss with children as well and the fourth conversation is around sharing our emotions, when to share them, how to share them, who you could share them with. And then the fifth conversation and the sixth conversation is when we really kind of build from the child themselves into that kind of classroom community. So the fifth conversation is around how we support others emotionally. And then the sixth conversation, which is my favorite one, is around how we can create an emotionally honest place in our classroom, in our school community. And that's when hopefully teachers can kind of hand over to the children and give them some ownership around what, what they think their classroom should look like, how they can support their friends and how they can try and build this emotionally honest space together in their school. So really to, to really pack its punch, this needs to be a whole school initiative. I mean, it's great if a single teacher takes this on board and goes with it, and it's hugely beneficial for that class and that class community. But really, to get the the most out of this, it needs to be a whole school initiative moving forward to that create that emotionally safe school community. Really, right? Because the there's a huge danger there that if you create this, you put all this effort into creating an emotionally honest space in your classroom where children feel able to express their emotions, they can empathize with one another and they can actually begin to discuss how to look outwards from themselves. If you then go into another year group and the context is completely different and suddenly your feelings aren't necessarily allowed to be, um, allowed to be front and center and you're not allowed to express that, that's a really, 
quite damaging experience for children and it and it teaches them a lesson that isn't as a lesson that in some spaces your emotions are valid and in others they're not and that's and as you say if if you have a school-wide culture that says we are in the business of talking about our feelings and and talking about them in an appropriate way with people who we trust um as a sort of standpoint i think that's far more powerful than than like you say an isolated classroom which is which is great for the time being but might end up um leaving people feeling a little lost once they leave the classroom and one thing you know this is great and i can hear teachers in their heads listening to this now thinking that's great but how can i give this the time and I've got so much other curriculum content to deliver so would you offer any advice around how this can be embedded without having to compromise um and you're exactly seeing those pressures yourself so um yeah absolutely teachers we have very little time and the time that we do have is already filled um so what Tom and I kind of learned from the work that we were doing is how much you can achieve and how much of a difference you can make by just shifting the lens of some of the conversations you're already having. So we spoke earlier about how, heart, uh, how children's books and picture books are at the heart of every primary school. And every time we open a book, we talk about the fronted adverbials in that book, the expanded noun phrases, how the characters described. And within that same conversation, you can give a couple of minutes to talking about how that character's feeling how you know they're feeling that way and um, how that character might should potentially navigate those feelings and just by having that short conversation whenever you're reading a book to your class which primary school teachers are reading to their class every day so it's an opportunity that's already in your timetable every day just by having those small conversations what you give children and young people is the opportunity to rehearse emotional navigation so you're giving them the chance to practice how someone should navigate anger or loss or, or jealousy in a friendship. And then when they come to navigate that themselves, when they're in that feeling, they've had a bit of experience from it. So I think for me, it's about utilizing um, the, the times in your class where you already have the opportunity to discuss emotions and picture books are a huge part of that. And you're both primary school teachers as we've established, but and we've talked a lot about using this potentially in, in a primary school setting. Equally, do you think this book is transferable for use in secondary education? Um, yeah, definitely. We've, um, we've worked with secondary colleagues. Um, we have people who have sort of invested in the book um, from a secondary standpoint, from a um, special educational needs standpoint. Um, hopefully what we've done with the book is allow a metaphor that is really clear and accessible for children um, and actually is applicable for adults as well. I think um, we actually read, I read the book the other night to Joe for the first time in its entirety with the final images and I was really struck that that as a 28 year old had I have had this book and read it there are things that I can glean from this book even now um, and certainly in the process of writing it with Joe I've seen that that I'm learning more about how to navigate my emotions honestly and um, safely now um, as a 28 year old so I think there is a there is a benefit to um, to any age range kind of getting the book and I think as well one of the most valuable places that it can be is in it's in your homes um families um families that trust one another and that can talk about what um their emotions have such a such a powerful bond there and i think me and joe personally can reflect on the fact that we had a fantastic childhood together um so such cherished and blessed memories but we didn't talk about how we felt. And as adults, now in a situation where I feel like I can ring my brother up and talk to him about how I'm feeling, or I can talk with my parents about um, difficult emotions that they might be experiencing, has only um, bolstered and improved our relationships. And um, 
if this book sat on a coffee table at home or it's read to a child at night or it becomes a conversation piece between a family I think what you will see is an improvement in how you relate to one another um, and it's it's certainly my hope that um, that one family benefits if one family benefits from being a um, being able to navigate difficult emotions in a better way than me and Joe could, then I think um, for me, that's a, that's a project worthwhile. And I'm really glad you asked, asked that question as well, because it was so important for Tom and I, when we, would, when we were writing the book and thinking about the illustrations and designing the teaching resources to support it, that we thought about how this book would be used in different contexts. So the illustrations are deliberately very simple and, and quite, quite bold, simple colours, minimal colours, in the hope that that means that even really young children can explain what's happening and use the illustrations to support their understanding of what you're discussing. But the teaching resources were designed so that they can be used in different, not only different age groups, but different emotional maturity levels because a year six class in one school can look very different to a year six class in another school. So what Tom and I have done in the teaching resources that you can get to a company bottled is with each of those six conversations, we've, there's a paragraph about progression, which talks about how that conversation, that activity and that discussion might look different in early years to if you are working with teenagers. And that's all part of the teaching resources. And I'm going to ask where people can get their hands on the book towards the end and remind me then as well to share how they can get the additional resources. But you've you've kind of alluded to it. And, and going back to what Tom was saying, I think it's so important. And sharing your emotions can actually help diffuse what can be quite tense situations in homes or, or in classrooms. It, you know, how much coming down some mornings and just saying, actually, I feel a bit sad today or I feel a bit frustrated today or tired or whatever and and then and sharing that rather than bottling it up and then it becoming out leaking out during it during the day and your behaviors that can cause tensions and ultimately sort of fallings out and arguments and, and that happens anywhere doesn't it in the classroom in the playground uh, within families at home so it it's something I think and Tom said he's still learning at 28 when and I'm still learning exactly this at more than 28. And um, it's just something that wouldn't it be great if we all knew it earlier? Think of the arguments and the silly fallings out that are all so upsetting it could avoid. So my, you alluded a bit to some of the things, but what did you two learn from going through this process of devising the book and even getting to this point of um, near publication now? Would you like to go first, Tom? <laughs> I'm happy yeah, to. Uh, yeah, you go first. <laughs> okay. Um, I was asked this question recently by somebody else, and I think that there's a, there's kind of a personal lesson that I learned and a professional lesson that I learned. Mm -hmm. I think going through this process of writing this book with Tom and trialing these conversations in classrooms professionally taught me that teachers have huge power and that we have power to support the children that we are working with to improve their handwriting or to learn more about history or to become better artists. But we also have power to help them to learn to navigate their emotions and to learn to build relationships that are based on honest emotional conversations. And that's something that teachers can do in their classrooms. And if, if we have that power, like you said, surely, surely we want that. Imagine what we could achieve if all children and young people learnt this earlier. So I think professionally, this kind of project has taught me maybe the scale of the power that we have to really to really shape and and um, hopefully offer children these really important skills that will support them in life. And I think personally, going through the the kind of process of writing this book and really thinking about emotionally honest spaces taught me that that learning to be honest about the way that you're feeling and learning to be honest with people about your emotions is how you really build community and how you build real relationships. Because I think, I think for a long time, I, and I think a lot of other people 
kind of present this perfect image of themselves or try to at least airbrush um, mm. parts of themselves that they're, they're less confident with. And that isn't how we build meaningful relationships. That isn't how we build communities. If we think about the people who are most important to us, we know that the bumpy parts of, of that person, we know the kind of difficult, messy parts of who they are, and we construct our communities in spite of those. Um, so I think this kind of whole project around emotional honesty and around learning to have honest conversations about how I'm feeling has taught me that that's how we build real relationships. Mm. In a world where we see so many airbrushed lives, I think that's so important. And yeah, absolutely. And, you know, people bottle their emotions up. They, they like you said, try and put their perfect foot forward. And that's really unhealthy and can cause a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress and angst. And, and we know, and we've talked before about levels of, um, uh, you know, mental health illness within in children, stress, anxiety, and so on. So if we can be at peace with our imperfections as well as our, as our perfections, that would be much better. And even sometimes laugh, because whilst we want to iron out our imperfections, there are certainly some things that are just part of us. And if we can laugh at ourselves and even, even acknowledge to other people that I know I'm being a bit like that, but I can't help it, is just so much easier than trying not to be um so definitely and tom what did you learn um i think i've learned that it works i think it works to talk about how you're feeling um i would say that um over the course of us writing this book me and joe have both had moments of um difficulty with our mental health that we haven't experienced before um and I think I've been quite conscious of the fact that I'm I'm telling people to talk about how they're feeling and if I'm not practicing what I preach then then that doesn't really show that I believe it at all and um and just practically, I can think back to moments over the past few months when I have had to say to myself, you need to talk to somebody you trust about this because this is eating you up a little bit. Um, and so I think that that is the crux of what I've learned. And, I, and, and the beauty of what me and Joe have been able to do as we've crowdfunded this book is hear from other people whose experiences have either been of... Um, of people who have spoken about how they feel and are learning how to do that in a better way. And, and I can think of a number of people who I've spoken to who have, who have said that since they've had a shift in how they've thought about talking about their feelings, um, they, they've noticed such a big difference. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a whole lifestyle shift. I'm going to actually embrace how I feel and talk about it rather than keep it hidden away and bottled deep inside. I think that children, um, we've heard countless stories of kind of children and we've seen it in our classrooms. Bottled used to be a little book hand drawn by Joe that we would use in our classrooms. We've seen that it works and it helps. Um, and then I think perhaps most poignantly and, and sadly is the fact that we've seen where it hasn't um, been an opportunity for some people to talk about how they feel. And, um, and that had bottled of being a book it might have helped somebody who needed to do that and I think um me and Joe have found that 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 would be perhaps one of the most meaningful things that this project could produce for us that um people who who have seen and experienced loss in their lives um as a result of bottled up emotions might see that this could help somebody else avoid that and um yeah that that's been pretty powerful for us great and of course this book doesn't stop you having emotions it just enables you and encourages you to talk about them we're not going to say that you're not going to feel fearful sad anymore um but talking through is the most important and it'll be fascinating potentially on your twitter feed or through your website afterwards to gather these 
um, the impact that this has had and the stories that come through. I'll be really fascinated to see. So the all important question, everyone now desperately wants a copy and needs a copy of this book in their classroom to share and on their coffee tables at home. So tell us how people can get a hold of a, a copy and kind of roughly when they're, they're available. I know you can pre-order now mm -hmm. and um, also then tell us a little bit about the resources that go with and how they, how people can get hold of those. So people who pre-ordered Bottled as part of our original crowdfunding campaign will get their hands on Bottled in just over two weeks time in the first week of February, which is really exciting. Um, it is also possible to pre-order Bottled through other retail providers. You can pre-order from Waterstones or from Amazon, from many others as well. If you pre-order from those, then you'll get your copy of Bottled at the end of February. Um, if you want to use Bottled in your classroom sooner, um, particularly if you're interested in using Bottle during Children's Mental Health Week, then please do reach out to Tom and I and we'll do anything that we can to support you being able to do that. If you're interested in the teaching resources that go alongside Bottled, likewise, just get in touch with Tom and I and we'll talk you through the, the different options of how we can support you and your school to be able to use, to be able to get the most out of Bottled. And how can people get hold of you? What's the best way? <laughs> sure. Um, we're addicted to Twitter in a most unhealthy way, but Twitter's probably the best bet for us. Um, our DMs are open, so you can contact us at, at Bottled Book um, or privately if you want to. Um, my handle's Brasso Teach um, with two S's and Joe's is JJ Brassington with two S's as well. Um, alternatively, if you'd like to email us, maybe you've got an inquiry about how your school or, or trust or even just a family, whatever it is, um, might be able to use Bottled and you want a little bit more of a chat, we're more than happy to talk. So you can email us at hello at anemotionallyhonestspace.co.uk. And I'm assuming um, people in schools can buy school sets of these books or multiple books. Brilliant. Yes, we can sort the school sets, we can sort um, teaching resources, just messages and we'll make sure that you've got what you need. That's brilliant. It's been, as always, an absolute delight to sit and have a chat with you about your book. And it's been really nice to follow the, the story as we've spoken a, over um, a few months. And I wish you all the success with the launch. I hope to see lots of people with their pictures of their bottle book on, on Twitter in the next couple of weeks. I will tweet my picture of my book when it arrives very excited to see it and it will be definitely be on my um, coffee table and all the best and it will be great to have you to do something else sort of down the line later on but brilliant idea great work and it's so great to see teachers sharing such amazing work as well so thank you so much thank you thank so you. much for having me it's been a joy to kind of connect with people throughout this project and you're one of those Catherine so thank you so much for that opportunity thank you you've said some wonderfully kind things um, this evening so thank you so much and um, yeah it's been great to have another conversation with you